Okay. Um, so for those uh, on the line, uh, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Nick Witte, um, Vice President with Related California, and uh, appreciate everyone taking some time out of uh, their Monday to listen to our presentation. Um, so with that, I'm going to go through some, you know, we have a quick presentation we want to go through. I'm going to go through some, you know, high level overview of our project, which we are we are calling Tasmanese phases two and three. Um, the reason for this being we we have a phase one that broke ground uh, well, just under a year ago now. So uh, I'll go through a high level overview and then I'm going to hand it off to our lead architect with Steinberg Hart, Ashesh Saheba, who will walk you through um, the preliminary design for our project. Uh, can you go to the next slide? Great. So this is a high level overview just uh, to orient everyone with where the project is located. Um, as you can see off to the west, there's Levi's Stadium um, along Tasman Drive. The project that we are presenting today is uh, located within that pink dotted line in kind of the southeast quadrant of what uh, has been kind of dubbed the Tasmanese specific plan area. Um, I made reference to our phase one project, which we broke ground on last year, and that's located right where the cursor uh, is. That's uh, just under 700 units uh, that we broke ground on last year. So um, the location of phases two and three is right along Tasman Drive, right where um, Tasman meets Lick Mill Boulevard. Um, you'll notice, and we'll go through this in a little more detail when we go through the plans, that uh, when we do break ground on these projects, we will actually um, be extending Lick Mill Boulevard um, up north um, from Tasman Drive through Tasman East, um, which will eventually connect up to uh, the northern future office campus that Related is also building. All right, next slide. So we wanted to include this slide just to remind everyone of, you know, just the larger entitlement that was approved back in November 2018 uh, as part of the Tasmanian specific plan. Um, this 45 acre industrial park was rezoned for high density uh, multifamily development. So the entire area is entitled for up to 4,500 dwelling units. Um, it will include uh, 10 acres of open space. Um, so our project is, again, in the southeast corner. And as part of our project, we will be building one and a half of the two and a half acres noted there uh, as a public park that will be dedicated back to the city. Um, so I think before we dive into the the detailed design. Um, you'll note that we're going to go through a high-rise scheme and a mid-rise scheme. Uh, the city of Santa Clara has worked with us in progressing two parallel designs, um, a high-rise scheme that yields 950 residential units and a mid-rise scheme that yields 900 residential units. And the goal there is, you know, we just want to ensure that we're going to be able to deliver the units that uh, this area badly needs and just coming out of a pandemic, uh, we wanted to ensure that we um, provided as much optionality as possible to ensure that we can move forward with a feasible project. So with that, um, I will turn it over to Ashesh to walk through the design. Okay, great. Thanks, Nick. So good evening, and I'll first be presenting the high-rise scheme that we've been developing uh, and have worked with the city on, on the review process to get to this point. Uh, as you'll see, there's two portions of uh, the project here, uh, two, two main structures, a structure to the east, closer to the Guadalupe River, and then a structure to the west. And really the Lake Mill extension is what then creates the dividing line between these two parcels that we have here. Uh, one thing to note, uh, and you'll see this consistently on both 
the scheme and, and the other scheme is the uh, the park that uh, Nick noted earlier, which um, on our portion of the site is 1.5 acres. And then to the north of that, which is another development Colin Partners is developing, they would be providing the additional one acres uh, to, to total to two and a half acres. Uh, in, in general, we've tried to really come up with the strategy of making sure that we could line the public streets with active uses. And as uh, I'll just describe first the Western uh, structure here. Uh, and what happens here is that we've got a lobby right on the intersection of Lick Mill and Tasman, and then um, access into parking, uh, a parking structure uh, behind the, the active uses. And then along Lick Mill and then turning the corner as well on Kaide Luna, we have townhomes that, that line that edge. We also have a greenway that connects to uh, the larger greenway network that you saw in that diagram. And that wraps this edge of um, this structure here. And for the building to the east, um, what we have is a, a lobby along this, this western edge as well as um, the footprint of, of, the t of, one, of, two t of one of the two towers, this, uh, the one towards the south, and then another one towards the northwest. Uh, again, we line the parking structure with uh, townhomes, and these townhomes actually uh, are facing the Guadalupe River and, and, a, um, and a riparian setback that's over here to help um, Redevelop the and uh, redevelop the land that's that's here currently into its natural state, uh, and we've also you'll see the way that the buildings are formed here. There's uh, a sequoia grove uh, that's currently on the site that we're looking to maintain with both schemes, and that's why um, this this corner of this building is is pulled back, as you can see. So, in in summary, uh, there's uh, 950 units in total between the two projects as as was described and um, both projects and in, in this scheme go to 21 stories uh, here are some visuals just to give you a sense of where um, what what these buildings are being developed as and the massing of them so in this visual this is tasman right along the, the lower left hand side here and we're looking along the lick mill extension towards the Western building. And then in this view, we're looking closer at the entry of that Western building as um, one approaches. And, and here's the Lignol extension right here that you can see to the left of this image. Uh, again, these are all residential units that go up with then some um, terraces, common terraces for the residents uh, towards the top. Uh, and then this view, uh, takes us from right as we cross over the Guadalupe River uh, on Tasman, looking at the eastern building. So the two towers you can see here, the townhomes at the base, the Guadalupe River is essentially right here, and then residential units above that. And then this is the the, the building we were just looking at, which is in the in the background here, which is the uh, the western building. Uh, as we as we move around this site, this is looking back past the park area as one arrives into the lobby lobbies of both of these buildings, which is which is a shared experience uh, for the residents. And then along uh, the the park edge, you can see there's a series of the, the townhomes, two story townhomes that, that we were describing earlier along with uh, the residential units above it and then the taller tower in the background. And so this is just a recap of what the park system um, has been de developed and the green spaces that, are, that have been created. Um, and as you can see, the, the greenway connection here, as well as the, the public park that's being created here um, at the edge of the Guadalupe River. So now I'll jump into the mid-rise scheme. Uh, as you can see, the organization is very similar in the sense that 
with the Lick Mill extension. We have we have a western building and an eastern building. Again, we're we're lining the garages in both cases um, with residential townhomes and also lobbies and amenity spaces. And really, this is uh, so we could really give active uses towards towards the main street here. Um, as we look at an aerial photograph of the mid-rise scheme, as you can see, there's courtyards that have been created, as well as um, some amenity terraces uh, for, for the residents to use. And this is the Sequoia Grove that I was speaking about in, in the earlier scheme that's present here as well. Um, looking at some of the views, this is the, the view of the um, Western building. Uh, here's the Lick Mill extension right here and Tasman Drive. And then um, looking back at the Eastern building from the park side over here and the Lick Mill extension as it goes along this edge. Um, and then the entry into the Eastern building, uh, again, we've, we've got access into the garage at this point. Uh, the main lobby here that um, denotes arrival for the residents and guests. And then um, amenity spaces uh, facing both this arrival area as well as the park um, along the along the northern edge. Uh, this is now a view just looking at Tasman again with the western building in the in the background and then the eastern building in the foreground um, and the, uh, the the main facade that faces Tasman. Uh, again, a little bit of a recap of the parks organization and the green spaces that we have around uh, this building, the greenway that wraps around and uh, the townhomes front that and then going back into the park, which uh, really was developed as a shared experience between both projects, even though um, a portion of it is on one site and the other is on the northern site, this will all be dedicated to the city as one uh, 2.5 acre site um, for, the, for, for public use. And that, that is it, thank you. So I think with that, that concludes our presentation and uh, happy to open it up for questions. Hi, thanks for that presentation. My name is Melinda Berlant and um, I'm probably a little late to your projects. I was not, uh, I've heard about related projects, but just haven't um, had it on my radar. And I've got quite a few questions actually. So I apologize if they've been covered in, in prior meetings, but I'm just trying to educate myself and, and get some information, trying to be um, a more aware uh, Santa Clara citizen. So, um, I've got a list of questions, no particular order. So just as I was thinking of them during your presentation. Um, let's talk for a minute about parking. I'm curious, how many parking spots are you proposing to build per unit um, at, uh, at Tasman East in phases two and three for residents and for guests? Yeah, um, thanks for the question. Um, Ashesh or Giovanni, I don't know if you have that exact number handy for, for both schemes. Yeah, Nick, we can we can give that number. Um, and we, we do have a percentage. Um, it, it is based on the type of unit mix that we have in both in both projects. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the amount of guest parking that we're providing. I'll let Giovanni just give that number to um, to the yeah. group here. Well, while he's looking, while he's looking at, do you, do you have it to get? Go, go ahead, Giovanni. Yeah, hi, I have um, the table that we prepared with the parking calculations. Shall we share that? No, just you can, you can just in the audio, you could just yeah. speak to what the, what the oh, ratio sure. is. Oh, sure. So, so, 
um, we we provide a total of uh, 510 stalls, and that is you know it's a fairly complex calculation based on the number of units and their sizes and the, the gas stall required and the car share and so on and so forth. But the total number is five 510. Um, I can give you a little breakdown. Um, we we provide half a parking for each unit below 550 square feet and one parking stall for each unit above 550 square feet. These are like uh, the guidelines from the city. Okay, so half a stall under how many square feet? 550. 550. It's like a studio. And, or... Yeah, and then... Um... And then one stall for anything over 550? Correct. Okay. And so um, the mix, you talked about, um, you know, a tower and townhomes. Are these units to be purchased or rented? It will all be rented, including the townhomes. That's a good question, actually. And we, we should have clarified that because townhomes can often... Uh, infer that they're for sale, but um, they're, they're really just meant uh, to be a, a differentiated unit type within our overall uh, rental pool. Okay, so as a citizen, and I've seen other apartment complexes in the city propose horribly low, which is what I consider this um, parking space for tenants, um, and I, I think this is um, going to cause massive problems. I know that you're probably making assumptions about things like uh, people using public transit and bicycles and Uber, Lyft, that sort of thing. But the reality is people have cars, whether they use them every day or not, they've got cars. And this is not allowing a place for people to put their cars, residents to put their cars, let alone visitors. So I'm very, very concerned about that. And and I'd, I'd request that you take a look at that, at the reality of, um, you know, 950 units, regardless of the size. I mean, a person in a studio does not have half a vehicle. So I think maybe I just want to clarify, though, understood. Um... But, you know, overall, the, the total parking um, being supplied is, is over one per unit when it's all said and done. Hmm. Well, I know I live in a fourplex and uh, the people living in this facility, in this building, we have a total of about 10, uh, actually three, five, seven. We have at least 10 cars, if not more, for a fourplex. Mm -hmm. So, and, and um, you know, that we're provided with um, four covered spots and two uncovered spots, and the rest is on the street. And it's awful if you get home late at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fully understand the concern. I think, you know, when the city was putting together the specific plan for this larger area, they were they were looking to promote, right, a, a much more a dense urban mm -hmm. environment, right? So um, I think, as I, part, sorry, go ahead. I, I understand that. And I've, I've seen that um, that train of thought work really well in other cities with amazing public transit but we don't have that in santa clara and you know i'm i'm a little flummoxed as to when where and how the reality of an increase would be i mean when is are these two phases projected to be completed and um where is the existing public transit and um where 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 are the contracts or agreements to uh, improve upon what exists currently? Yeah. Because you're talking about a lot of people in this small area. Sure. So happy to answer your question on the existing public transportation. So 
I think, as you can see from this, this site plan, we are actually at the nexus of a number of existing public transit lines. So uh, there is a VTA light rail station um, kind of right, right along Tasman there, where that blue dot is. Okay. Um, and so that's there currently. That is. Wow. Okay, good. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, not... and, and there's also the Amtrak station here. Um, okay. That is there currently, right on the right, right on Lafayette and and Tasman. And and I just wanted to also note that uh, the figures that were given for parking were only for one parcel. So for 510 units, let's say on this 4A site, we have 550 stalls. So it, it wasn't for the 950. Uh, there, there's a lot more parking for all 950. Okay. This was just for um, oh, so the five hundred and ten half of the site. So five hundred and ten stalls is for how many units? Uh, for five hundred. By just about the same five ten, yeah. About five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah no. It's... Well, that makes me feel much more comfortable. Yes. As far as those numbers, <laughs> is there you know, and and you know, I'm thinking about. Um, you know, guest parking and parking for the public who choose to come in from out of the, you know, out of that immediate area to use the park, the open space. Is there going to be parking for these people? Or are they going to end up frustrating the tenants in the area with parking in inconvenient places? I, well, well, there is ample guest parking that's also being provided, and mm -hmm. um, a, a, along within Tasman East, there's a lot of street parking uh, that's okay. that's available for for the public, like you're describing, okay. to, to visit the parks. Uh, even all along Calle de Luna, right here, which is a very long street, mm -hmm. um, there's there's street parking along along that street as well as um, portions of the street as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't been over in that area in some in some time. You can probably tell from some of my questions. So I apologize if I'm a little less than informed. Um, you know, you're talking about increasing um, or building out some additional streets, and of course, lots of um, you know, there's there are going to be a lot of vehicles. So I'm concerned about. Um, Safe paths and biking paths, pedestrian paths, um, especially if people are using their bicycles to get to the train or the light rail or to work, that sort of thing. How how have you incorporated those sorts of things? Yeah. Hey everyone. Jump in or yeah, in just want to let yeah, everyone sorry, know. Go I think ahead. I got I think I just got disconnected for a second, but I am back on. But oh. feel free to respond to Chef. Uh okay. in a Shesh. I just want to make sure as yeah. panelists, you can see the Q&A, um, or can I only see it as the host? Uh, uh, I, I can see the Q&A. OK, yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. W would you like us to answer to uh, in, in, uh, as well, the Q&A? I guess that's helpful. Uh, yes. Yeah, why don't yeah, we we'll, for that? Thank and you. I don't okay. mean to uh, take over this whole thing. I have no visibility to other people being in. So if I need to take a break from my list of questions, I'm happy to do so. Just let me know. Okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, sure. I'll, I'll answer your question and then we'll see if other folks would, would like to. And, and we could also, um, I don't know if everyone is able to see the Q&A, but we can also um, read those questions and answer them as well. On, uh, yeah, on I call. can't see. I can't see the Q&A. Okay, so maybe after I answer your question here, we'll 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 jump to the Q and A portion. Great. So um, your question about pedestrian network. So uh, one of the images that I, that I have up on the screen here is actually um, the Santa Clara uh, Planning D Division. They they came up with the Tasman East Focus Area sp Specific Plan that um, Nick was referencing, and this is a diagram right out of that plan, which is a. Mm -hmm. Uh, plan that's developed through a public process, of course. And what you can see here, as far as the pedestrian network goes, is that even though these existing roads are there right now, and then we're we're obviously adding this new hatch road that you can see here, and in the future there could potentially be a hatch road here. Um, the 
the, the plan did contemplate how to circulate through this site for also um, a secondary way for pedestrians to to um, to make it through, not just always on the sidewalk along the street. So um, the idea was to create these ver uh, various size parks. So the 0.5 stands for a 0.5 acre park, the one acre park here, the 2.5 acre park that we were talking about, which is the largest in the district, uh, and then the 0.85 uh, acre park at the end of Calle de Sol here that you can see. And then these arrows um, in magenta with the um, with the dashed lines, they're the greenway network. Uh, so all the development that occurs within these parcels need to also develop, as far as their portion of the parcel, a greenway, which is a pedestrian network to help connect, again, uh, in, in multiple locations, not just through the street. So what this does help with, it breaks down the scale of these blocks that you can see because these are natural breaks that are going to occur because of the pedestrian network, but it also then creates a real opportunity for the residents and the and the public who come to this district to then go from one park through a greenway experience to another park and and connect in, you know throughout the district in this fashion. So I think it's been thought out in a in a way that helps um, alleviate hopefully some of your concerns on how people circulate. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, um, should we go to the questions? Nick, do you, I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, so to I'm just looking at the questions that have been uh, sent so far. So Jeff Houston has asked, what is the parking ratio compared to city requirements? It's a good question. So I think what Giovanni had been outlining, right, is the methodology that the city has designated in arriving at a required stall count. So we are actually providing roughly almost 10% above what's required by the city um, in terms of overall parking count. So hopefully that answers your question, Jeff. Um, Hazel has asked, at the intersection of Calle de Luna and the Lick Mill extension, uh, is there a building blocking the view to the mountains? Um, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Are you, are you asking the intersection of Calle de Luna and the Lick Mill extension? Um, like an existing building or the future buildings, and I guess blocking the views for who um maybe if you could maybe clarify the question I, I believe the answer to your question is i'm interpreting it is no um but but happy to elaborate on that if you have further clarity on that question yeah can you hear me yeah Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just wondering. So uh, today, the area, or well, not today, but previously, the area has about you know one, two, maybe three story building, actually three story buildings, um, you know, and with all these high rises coming in, we lose that view to the mountains, right? The open space. So I'm wondering if when you're when you're standing on Cali de Luna, and you're facing, I guess, east. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a high rise that's blocking my view to the mountains and creating that open space? Do you, do you know what I mean? Have yes. you been to the project site? So yeah, I think if you stood there, you would understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I, I understand what you're asking mm -hmm. now. So if you're saying in a future condition, if you're standing on Calle de Luna, will these buildings be blocking the view to the mountains? I think the short answer is um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you know, the existing condition of buildings there is two to three stories. So um, portions of the view will, will definitely be blocked a little bit. You're not going to be able to obviously see 360 degrees. But that being said, you know, you'll still and, and again, the, the whole area is not being built as high rise. Right. So you still very much get the dynamic of looking around and being able to see. The mountains around you will you be able to see them with a full unobstructed 360 degree view probably not but but again i don't think there's anything that's going to be fully obstructed from view is there a consideration to place the park there so you're you don't have a high rise blocking that view 
So unfortunately, we don't actually make, we didn't actually uh, drive where the parks were going to be situated. That was actually a city, city of Santa Clara Parks Department driven requirement. Um, so I, I understand your concern, but I think even if we wanted to, the city actually wouldn't allow us to move the park from where it's currently situated. Mm. I drew a couple lines on this drawing here to show how the park opens up the view. So again, if you're if you're at this intersection or along Lick Mill over here, um, your your view is unencumbered because basically the park extends from Lick Mill to the Guadalupe River and looking uh, looking east. Yeah, if you're standing right at that corner, that's a, that's a very good point, Ashesh. And I think that's kind of what the city was thinking about when they were thinking about where to put this park. Um, you know, having it, you know, adjacent to the Guadalupe River and having the view corridors that way. Um, that's correct, that, you know, you have a nice unobstructed view corridor to the east. Okay, um, moving down the question list, I think another one from Hazel is street parking available. So I think as Ashesh had laid out, um, the, the short answer is yes. As you can see from, you know, there's a number of interior roadways that currently exist and will also connect to the Lick Mill Boulevard extension. Um, and there will be opportunities to have street parking along those streets in the interior. All right, moving down. Given the proximity to public transit, why do you need to exceed parking requirements? So I, I think, you know, it's, it's an interesting debate, right? I think, uh, Jeff, I think we are we are likely more aligned in your thinking looking forward um, relative. I know Brenda had, had described a concern that she doesn't think we're, we're providing enough parking. Um, so I think it's finding that that middle ground, right, where we understand that this area historically has been more of a suburban kind of sprawling area, whereas Brenda noted people do have cars. Um, however, we're also keeping an eye on the future where things are going with, you know, public transit and people using ride shares and things like that. So I think where we landed was was kind of a middle ground in, you know, trying to satisfy what we think there's going to be demand for both in terms of people who absolutely still want to drive cars, uh, but also, again, keeping an eye on the future to to see where, you know, things are going with, you know, EV cars, driverless cars eventually. Um, so again, I think we we kind of stuck on this middle ground here to arrive at our stall count. Okay. Anonymous attendee has asked, how much is that building? I, Unfortunately, I, I might need a little more color on exactly what you're you're asking there. Not quite sure how to answer that question as currently written. So we, we can revisit that one if you if you want to clarify, but again, not sure how to answer that as written. Um, Zane has asked, would there be any plans to increase the mixed use of the area? For example, adding more grocery stores, shops, cafes. So um, if you, Ashesh, if you can go back to the specific plan exhibit on page two. So this was, again, how the city ultimately um, arrived at laying out this overall area. You'll see the areas outlined in red. Um, this was kind of designated as the primary commercial retail corridor. So the area is zoned for up to 108,000 square feet of ground floor retail. Um, however, that's that's really meant to be designated along Calle del Sol right here. So our phase one project that actually borders 
borders this is is providing um, roughly 17,000 square feet of ground floor retail. Um, we have yet to decide exactly what type of tenants go into that space, but um, specific to a grocery store, um, we'll absolutely look at it. I think that space in particular is probably too small for a full scale grocery store, um, but we're absolutely gonna look at a, a good use and a good mix of retail tenants there. Okay, moving down here. So Melinda has asked, let's talk about affordable housing. How much will the rentals cost? Are any units being set aside for affordable housing? How many and what will they cost? What will it take to get in? Who would qualify? So Melinda, it's a great question. And I think something, um, I think, differentiating us here that we worked with uh, the city of Santa Clara and a, uh, another developer on is when the city proposed the specific plan, it called for only 10% of the units and at 100% of average median income to be provided. Um, we worked with a, another developer who recently broke ground on a 100% uh, affordable um, project, 150 units. Um, they will be providing units that are actually at 50% of average median income. And not only will we be providing, you know, units that are at a lower level of average median income, but the city will be getting those units quicker uh, than they otherwise would have. So um, I think it was a very, uh, you know, working with the city of Santa Clara and this other developer, it was a very positive outcome, I think, for the area as a whole. Um, so, so yeah, hopefully that then answers your question on affordable housing. Um, okay, anonymous attendee, when are these phases as well as the larger related Santa Clara project expected to break ground? Good question. So, um, you know, we label these phases two and three, I would say, um, you know, pending a lot of macroeconomic things, uh, the current schedule is to hopefully break ground on phase two um, in the next, call it 18 to 24 months. Um, you know, we have to work through our, our building permit process with the city and complete the design in order to get there. And then phase three will likely follow um, you know, 18 to 24 months after that. So Melinda has asked, are there schools in the area? How or will they be impacted by these new units? What is your projection for increased needs by the schools with more students? Um, so the short answer and feel free to let me know if this doesn't answer the question, but you know, as, as part of all these new projects, uh, really in Tasman East, but the larger Santa Clara area, um, each project makes a, a, what I consider a pretty significant um, contribution to the, the, uh, the County of Santa Clara Unified School District. Um, so in terms of, you know, uh, the effect on the schools in the area. I think, you know, bringing additional units, um, you know, we're, we're contributing um, some significant uh, dollars to the Unified School District in order to uh, help continue them to operate and grow for the area. And Nick, just to give a heads up, uh, um... The Catherine Hughes Elementary School is just right across Tasman in this in this neighborhood right here. Yep. In this location. Yep. Okay. I think let's see. I think I've gotten through the open questions. Unless I'm missing any. There, there were some at the very top, Nick. Oh. Um, from where you start, I think I see a question from Zane at uh, 614, uh, do you have that? Zane. 
Yeah, the the one the one related to the grocery stores and retail. No, no. Oh, you you. I think because you got kicked off and maybe rejoined, you might not see these, but I'll I'll just read them. Okay. Um, the first one is: Are there any plans to incorporate public transportation into the project? So I, I think I, I I maybe answered this a, a little bit earlier, um, but. I think we feel and the city feels that this area right at the nexus of Lafayette and Tasman is already uh, extremely um, well serviced by existing uh, public transportation with the VTA line going east west, connecting the Caltrain to the west and downtown San Jose to the east. And then you have the existing Amtrak and Ace train line going north south, um, all the way up as north as, as Sacramento, actually. Um, so in terms of above and beyond that, um, I mean, there's no, there's no explicit plans to add, you know, additional stops or anything like that, given the close proximity we already have. Okay. Um, next question. How many stories is the mid-rise plan? I can answer that, Nick. It's, it's eight stories for the mid-rise. Hazel asked this question. It's, it's eight stories for the mid-rise plan. Um, and then next question from Hazel, what is the mix of units, uh, studios, one, two, three bedrooms, et cetera? Uh, I think Giovanni can give just a high level um, mix that we have, which, which really applies to both the high rise and mid rise schemes. Yeah, yes. I, I, I actually have it up, Giovanni. I'm happy to answer. Oh, you do? Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. It's, Go ahead, it's, uh, it's roughly, the studio count is roughly 23% of the total um one beds is 43 percent um two beds 29 percent and then three beds is uh three percent okay great and then um there's a question is there any retail as part of this development i think you already answered about the retail um focus yep but in, in the in your previous uh, explanation and then is street parking available? We've already discussed that. Hayes will ask that question. And then uh, I think you covered the rest because it starts with the proximity of public transit and, and parking requirements. So I think, uh, unless there's any new questions that have come up. Oh, um, I think Melinda has a couple new questions that came up while we were reviewing. So. Okay, what does the current homeless? unhoused situation look like right now are you aware of anything being done to help the unhoused um you know i i think this question is a is a larger question that we're, we're all trying to find a solution for not just in santa clara but the the greater bay area um what what i would say is i think you know with this this whole area kind of getting redeveloped not just with our project that the number of other developers building here. And again, you know, what I had referred to um, earlier with, uh, you know, this uh, affordable project that's being built that again, uh, you know, we understand the cost of living is, is extremely expensive. So even 15 per 50 percent of average median income isn't necessarily cheap. But, um, you know, I think the city has worked with all the, de the developers to do everything in our power to, you know, offer a good mix within the large, the, the larger 4,500 units of units at 50% of AMI, 100% of AMI, um, as well as the market rate units. Nick, I think right before that, there was a question from Melinda, what is the projected rental cost of each unit? But I think that's what yeah, so I mean, at, at this stage in the process, uh, we haven't really gotten down to the granular level of, you know, what does a one bed unit in the second store in the second floor cost, right? So um, at, at this stage, we're, you know, given these units are going to be delivering, you know, two years from now, we haven't really gotten to that granular level. Uh, looks like Jeff Houston uh, just put in a comment on Santa Clara Community Advocates 
advocates for encourages you to reduce parking to below city requirements. I think he's just making a statement, not necessarily a question. Yeah. So, Jeff, we we, we hear you. Um, again, I don't think it's a question, but your comment is heard and uh, don't necessarily disagree with you on a lot of levels. Um, Unfortunately, I, I think this is something that at a minimum, in order for our project to get approved by the city, um, we're not really in a position to uh, offer parking below the city requirements. But I hear where you're coming from. Um, and again, I think we're trying to walk a fine line with seeing what the future demand for this project will be like, but understand, um, you know, this is kind of the direction that a lot of cities are going in and trying to reduce uh, parking and traffic. I think that was it, Nick. Uh, let's, oh, no, I think there's some more questions coming up. Have you surveyed current apartments in the area to validate your assumptions of parking? Uh, this we, is from Hazel. Yeah, Hazel, we, we have actually, and it's something that we we monitor closely on, you know, a quarterly basis, just checking in on, you know, newer apartments in the area and what type of parking that uh, that they're offering and continues to be, for the most part, you know, right around this this one per unit ratio um and again i think uh i think in terms of you know looking to the future i think this is something that uh you know if people do feel strongly and i understand why they do about trying to reduce parking uh unfortunately developers hands are somewhat tied by uh the city uh, city code requirements. Um, I think as some of you are aware in San Francisco, they actually have parking maximums. I think they're one of the first cities to do that. Um, so it's definitely a, a good conversation topic, uh, for the larger community to discuss. And then Jeff, yeah, okay, I what see these now. facilities. Okay, you can see it now. Okay. Yeah, what facilities will related Santa Clara City Center provide to these new residents? Will the facilities be, pedest be pedestrian oriented? Um, so yeah, the short answer is yes. Um, you know that that project obviously is a is a pretty large undertaking and will be delivered. You know, over a a, a very long period of time. It, it won't. It unfortunately won't uh, won't happen overnight. But you know. Eventually, uh, the goal of that of the city center there is to provide like a true, you know, live, work, play environment, right, where you have a, a good mix of uh, not only residential, but, um, you know, office, but really, I think the to answer your question on what facilities will the Tasmanese residents uh, be able to use, you know, there's going to be what I what I believe is a great mix of um, I don't even want to call it traditional retail because, you know, I think as we've seen with the times that, uh, you know, traditional big box indoor retail is, is real, you know, people are starting to, uh, you know, segue away from that. So we're going to be offering a great, you know, outdoor mix of, you know, great food and beverage options. And I think just a very walkable um, outdoor retail experience for both the people in city center as well as people in Tasman East and the larger Santa Clara area. Okay, I think I've made it to the bottom of the list. So Melinda just put in a new question. Is any of this area designated a flood zone? The answer to that is no. We are currently in flood zone X, which is, um, you know, kind of the designated as the lowest risk uh, flood zone area.
And then Hazel has asked, what are the next steps? So for this project specifically, um, you know, we, we've held, we're holding this community meeting right now. The goal is to um, then take this project to development review hearing, which is, um, you know, a city, uh, essentially a, a panel that basically confirms that, you know, our design and our, um, that we're proposing meets all the criteria um, within the Tasman East specific plan. So the goal is to go to development review hearing in June. So once we are through development review hearing approval, we then turn our focus to, um, you know, progressing the design and ultimately uh, submitting for a building permit with the city. Okay, are there any any other questions I can answer? Okay, if not, um, again, we, we really appreciate everyone taking the time. I think we've gotten a lot of great feedback on a number of items for the project. And uh, I think as we continue to progress through the process. Um, we look forward to uh, working with the community on hopefully delivering some much needed housing for the area. So again, appreciate everyone's time and uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Rebecca, and any anything else from you? No, I'm gonna go ahead and end the webinar. Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks everyone.